What a beautiful day. What a view. Whoa! Howdy. How you doing? Doing a little ladder testing today. Yeah, this one seems to hold up pretty good. Put the old Maxwell stamp of approval on this, baby. Nice day, huh? Feels great. You like the Cartwrights, you know? All of them, rolled into one. Put on the old work shirt. Work up the sweat. Sweat like a son of a gun. Doing what I can. Loving what I do. There's nothing like working with your two hands. To me, Uh, to me, see, even that, that's, that's good, because that, that makes you feel alive in a, in a certain way. You know what I mean? Stupid thumb. I, I hit it with the hammer. Oh, yeah. let me have a look at it. Sit down. Yeah, I don't know how it happened. They say that 75% of all accidents occur right in the home. Yeah. Could well, it happen to anybody? This time it happened to me. Yeah, let me get the eye down. I don't know. You know, things like this have been happening a lot lately. I don't understand it. Funny thing is, I don't seem to mind it. I don't know whether it's the fresh air, or the, the food, or what. Like that breakfast this morning. Steak and eggs, biscuits, waffles, grits. <laughs> Did you like the corn fritters? Oh, the corn fritters? <laughs> Listen, can we do that again tomorrow, please? Look, this is gonna sting, so hold on. on. Mm-hmm, that's so cool. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Oh, you're good at this. Administration, huh? It is what I do for a living, such as it is. What are you thinking about? I was uh, just thinking about all those stars we counted out the window last night. Did you make a wish on one? Didn't have to. Got everything I need right here. You know what I wish? What? We should go see your daddy. Now, why would you say something like that? It's been on my mind. You know he's here. He's over at the VA. Yeah. I see him a couple times a month. Seems only right that you should pay your respects, seeing as how you are his only son. Yeah, right. Well, he wants to see me. He can come over here. He can't. He's in a wheelchair. Well, that's too bad. Slap. No, I'll go see him when I feel like it. You haven't seen him in 25 years. So? Boy, you're a hard case, aren't you? I'm a hard case? <laughs> you didn't know Stan Maxwell. Big Stan, that's what they used to call him. Big chest, big voice, big hairy knuckles, big leather belt with the bull moose on the buckle. He used to work about 16 hours a day over at the crankshaft shop. He'd come home at night, not in a real good mood. 
He'd wave that belt around his head, just scare the hell out of my mom and me. And then he'd uh, do real nice fatherly things, like if I made a little noise, if he was listening to his favorite radio program, he'd uh, throw a steel tip work boot at my head. And my mom, she didn't fare much better. I, I don't know why she took it. In fact, I asked her once, I said, what makes you get up in the morning? She said, it's the clock slap. When the clock goes off, I get up. She was a saint, Kitty. She served her time with him. And so did I. When I left this place, I swore I'd never see that man again. Slap. I understand hard times in families. Why don't you bury the hatchet? Forgive and forget. You know, I, I see him on my rounds. He's not all you say he is. I mean, he, he's kind of gentle and sweet. Never threw nothing at me. Well, but maybe it's because you never made a noise when he was playing the radio. I told him you'd come see him. I know it's none of my business, but I did it. I hope you forgive me. I gotta run. Kitty. I can't go over there. You know what my horoscope said today? Said I should spend the evening with somebody special. Meet me at Jake's after my shift. Wow. Charlie, do you know anything about these? Um, what are they? They're flowers, Charlie. Actually, Miss Ralston, I do know a little bit about them. They're, um, they're from a secret admirer. From Slap? No, they couldn't be from Slap. They're alive. They're from me, Miss Ralston, Charles Wilson, as a token of my sincerest thanks for being so kind with me and with all that's happened. What do you mean, Charlie? Miss Ralston, I want you. I need you. Now, Charlie, I thought we talked this all over the other day. Yes. But then I asked myself, how often does an opportunity like this come along? And I had to tell myself, not very often, Charlie. Oh, you'll get over it, believe me. In another 20 years, all you'll remember about this are my legs. Miss Ralston, I'm putty in your hands. Uh, OK, but still, I, I think we made the right decision. Now, we've just got to get on with our lives. You've got to go your way, and I've got to see Nelson. You write a sports column? No way, Howard. I'm telling you, Nelson, right now there is a sports writer inside me trying to get out. What do you want? You're looking at a man who is no stranger to quoits. The latest circulation figures, Chief, they're way down. I'm gonna make my move today. No more beating around the bobcat. I'm gonna follow my nose on this one. Nelson, do you mean you're gonna replace Slap with somebody out of a folder? Somebody we don't even know? You're darn tootin'. I'm replacing the Primavera. Lock, stock, and sinker. I thought you said we weren't gonna have any sports column at all. I'm hiring this guy. It reads like silk off a spoon. And look at that handle. Even sounds like a sports writer. Lou Harper. Sounds like a guy with a mortgage and six mouths to feed. He's due here at 11. Show him in right away. Nelson, I really think you should give this some more thought. Now, we've all lost a valuable person in Slap. And besides, if you hire somebody else, what's going to happen when Slap comes back? Look, far be it from me to burst your appendix. But the man is not coming back. And I'm telling you now, unless this Harper guy turns out to be some kind of carpet sweeper, I'm hiring him this afternoon. Hey, big dude. Hey, Dutch. Give me the usual. Two fingers of something diabetic. Running a special today. Anything green, half off. Plus all the maraschino cherries you can eat. Make it a double. What's the occasion? 
in case we have to detail it for the paramedics. I don't know what's happening to me, Dutch. Driving to work this morning, I saw a dead bird by the side of the road. Reminded me of my life. I believe I've seen that same bird from time to time. Nelson doesn't think Slap's coming back. What do you think, Dutch? Have you heard anything from him? Not a peep. Well, if you had, would you know whether or not he's all right? Now, have you ever known our Slap not to be? Harper didn't show. Harper? Harper who? The guy I was going to get to fill slap spot. My monkey's really cooked if this guy's a no-show. I've got no other prospects. You know, there's an amazing lack of black colonists on that paper, I noticed. In this whole Southwest area, I noticed. Why do you think that is, Nelson? Well, I... Now, I'm not making a pitch for myself, you understand, but you could do a lot worse. First it was Judy. Then Howard's walking around with a baseball cap. Now you. What do I look like? A feather bed? You got a glass of water or some place to clean up? Are you Kruger? Yeah. The guy with the beetle haircut back at the office, he, he told me I'd find you here. Well, you found me. Who the hell are you? I'm your new sports writer. Harper. Call me Lou. A&D will be right back with Dabney Coleman in Slap Maxwell. A&D is back with Dabney Coleman as Slap Maxwell. How late am I anyway? Late ain't the problem. Well, my rental lemon brought down by some cactus somewhere. It must have been 150 degrees out yeah, there. Yeah, well, that's why they call it a desert. I had to walk the last eight miles. Well, if you put a picture on your resume, this would have never happened. Lou Harper? What kind of a name is that for a woman? Short for Louise. Yeah, I didn't say Louise. It said Lou, and that's what I was expecting. A Lou. Well, let's just say that's the last time I'll disappoint you. Where's my desk? What are you talking about? I ain't giving you a desk. You're a woman. Oh, trying to use logic on me, huh? Hey, wait a minute. You got something chiseled in stone? It says a woman can't write sports. What are you, some kind of misogynist? A oh, Presbyterian. What's religion got to do with it? The point being... You hate women. Only when they write sports. Oh, well, that's logical. Look, I need somebody to haul the lemons, fill the jugs, not somebody who's going to open a daycare center right after maternity leave. And you hate kids, too? I love kids. I'm not married. But you're likely to be, someday. Suppose you fall in love with somebody who wants you to move to East Uranus with him. What do I do? I'm not going anywhere, Nelson. I like it here already. Look, don't take offense. It's been a long day, and you're not exactly what I had in mind. Besides, you're sitting in my chair. Did you read my stuff? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you might as well call off your search right now because you're not going to do any better than me. I just walked eight miles through Flintstone country to get here so you could tell me I don't fit your dubious requirements and I haven't broken your nose yet. I'm showing a lot of restraint for a sports writer, especially the kind this paper tends to favor. What's that supposed to mean? I know who I'm replacing. I know he was good. I also know he left you under a big black cloud. Well, guess what? Here's your silver lining. I don't need the lining. I need the whole damn coat. Just let me show you what a real writer can do. That's all I'm asking. And let's just say, I don't mind seeing a lot of guys soaping up in the shower while I prove my point. My job is writing about people and the games they play, and I'm real good at my job. You should remember that, because if it ever comes to a showdown and you have to choose between my writing and Slap Maxwell's, you wouldn't know what in the world to do. I suppose you're a hard worker, too. I am. I'm knocking the ball right out of the park right now, and you don't exactly know why. You can't quite put your finger on why I intrigue you, but I do. Come on, Nelson. You're a newsman. What's your gut telling you? I know what mine's telling me. We're going to do business here because I'm your man. That's it, Mr. Maxwell. I'm calling the supervisor. What does she say? You've got to do something for the circulation, right? <laughs> Mr. Pazzarotti, time for your bath. <clears throat> All right, come on. You're breaking up my game. Come on, come on. Who wants to play cards here? I do, Pop. Deal me in. You're standing in my light. In or out? 
How are you, Pop? You sick it? You ain't got it. Well, that was a lot of fun, Pop. What are you doing here? I live here. Not you. Him. Came to see you. You still doing whatever, whatever it is you do? Yeah. On sabbatical. We're doing a little research. Just passing through town. Went up to the old house. Stan, who is he? Aubrey, um, would you excuse us? We, we haven't seen each other in, uh, in 25 years. I think you got something there. Those damn Democrats. Aubrey, I said shut up. So, what do you want? Just want to see if you're okay. Uh, I'm not dead. That's what you were hoping for. No, it wasn't. Heard you got married. That's right. Got a kid, too, a boy. A big boy, very tall. He's a writer, too, just like his old man. That's so? Yeah. Matter of fact, uh, he's he's pretty proud of me these days. I uh, I sort of won this award, well, I didn't sort of, I've, I actually won this award, and, which is a pretty big deal. There's a magazine, my picture's right there on the cover. Oh, any girls in there? Get your paws off it. Take it easy, Bob. Uh, this old cooch driving me crazy. Somebody had to shoot him. Why don't you just throw a boot at him for old time's sake? And I don't need you around here, either. Well, as a matter of fact, this wasn't my idea. I wouldn't even be here. Kitty hadn't suggested I come over here. Kitty, huh? Ain't that the way? Some panty waist. You letting a woman tell you what to do? You just... You just... Speak up, Bubba. What are you stuttering now, too, huh? <laughs> Look at you. You're getting mad, huh? You want to take a poke at me? Well, go ahead. See if you can whip an old man in a wheelchair. I'm still tough enough to send you yelping out of here, turning tail just like you used to do. I never ran from you. That's what you say. Damn it, Bob. Don't you ever let up? I really tick you off, don't I? Yeah, you do. Visiting hours are over. I'm leaving. That's not true, you know, what that fella says in that article about me working in the factory. I was a foreman. You tell him that. When your mom didn't have to sew her own clothes, she did it because she liked it. You tell him. I'll straighten him out. Let me know. Well, I don't know about that. I'm not real sure I'll be back through here. Well, I'm not sure I want you to. Fine. Cut me for it. You get high cut, you won't have to come back here for another 25 years. Low cut, you bring me a case of beer. It's a deal. Go for it, son. Go for it? Ah, you whack him over the head with a shovel. Did you beat him? I'm tied. Both drew a three of hearts. <laughs> I should have told you about those decks over the VA. Well, I'll tell you, thank you. I'll tell you one thing. He is still full of hell. I walked in that place, I felt like a six-year-old kid in short pants. But, you know, for a minute there, I thought maybe... Maybe we could settle something. You're glad you went to see him. Mm -hmm. Yep, I should have fought him, though. I think, I think maybe I could take him now. Maybe, with him dragging that IV around. <laughs> <sighs> no, you're looking better. You're not scowling tonight. Well, I feel easy with you. 
feel like no time has passed at all. I, mean, I picture you, 16 years old, the most vivacious cowgirl I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Slap. I don't know what mirror you're looking into, but I'm not that girl you remember. Oh, you sure are. No, I'm not. I, I don't want to be. I wouldn't go back and do that all again for all the tea in China. It's a pretty good time. So... Hey, you know what happened in my story today? What story? A soap. Oh. Came out just the way I thought. It was Pamela's doing. Do you know she's a little slut? I told you that. <laughs> Honey, do you... Do you ever feel like just packing up and leaving this town? Getting restless, huh? No, I'm happy as a bear in the basement. I... What's that mean? I don't know. I just heard someone say it one time. <laughs> I feel like raising a little hell here. Why don't we see if we can... Find ourselves a mechanical bull, maybe a drive-in with some adult movies. No, but 4-H is holding its second annual corn shuck. Ooh, corn shuck. Yeah, that could be fun. Not often you get to see a good corn shuck. I didn't say it was going to be good. Uh, well, that's the beauty part. You never know, do you? <laughs> Slap Maxwell.